Ah. Uh, oh man. <laughs> this is 31 weeks pregnant today. By the time you see this, I will be probably two to three weeks further along. So as of right now, we have eight weeks until this baby is here. And, <laughs> oh man, my body, I, I'm gonna film after this, um, changes my body has gone through because, I mean, stuff really changed when I hit the third trimester. I'll tell you what, like I thought I wasn't gonna have some of the things that I'm experiencing right now. So <laughs> I'll do a video on that, but this video, um, I wanted to talk about kind of like my birth plan and you know what you guys can expect from my birth vlogs. I do plan on doing like a birth video and not necessarily to share with you guys what's gonna go down when I give birth, but you know I'm very open so I do enjoy that aspect too, but more so because I just really want like a beautiful video diary of like what I did and what Nick helped me do. And so my daughter can see that at some point and see how she was brought into this world and just kind of like, it's almost like, yeah, just like a video diary. Piper's starting to play with her toy in the background. So if you hear that, oh, I need to loosen up my sweatpants. <laughs> ah. So, I have always been the type of person, and maybe you know this because you've probably followed, um, or maybe you have followed my, uh, all, like my health stuff that I've shared with you guys on the internet about like, you know, low thyroid, um, uh, low testosterone, those sorts of things. But I'm the type of person that really appreciates Western medicine sometimes. But I also feel that there's a time and a place, and for the most part, I'm somebody that prefers to treat things with natural remedies, um, more naturopathically. Why did my monitor just stop? What the hell? <laughs> I had a monitor set up, and it literally just turned off, and I feel like it's turning back on right now. I haven't used this monitor for years. Okay, now we're back. I can see myself again. This is good. Just make sure I'm in focus. So uh, anyways, I prefer a more naturopathic approach to a lot of things. Like I feel like a lot of illnesses and ailments can be cu uh, cured with diet and fitness and herbs and tinctures and things like that. So um, I, you know, kind of never really put a whole lot of thought into like how I would give birth until I we started trying. And so then I started watching a lot of birth vlogs and I watched some in a hospital, I watched some at home, I watched some in a birth center. So I wanted to kind of like get a good overall understanding. Excuse me for like leaning back, but my back is killing me and I kind of need to. <laughs> Maybe I'll move this. Oh, if I can lean forward, move this mic a little closer. Okay. Oh shit. So I did uh, watch a lot of vlogs just to kind of see like, just to get a glimpse into that delivery room and what it was like and how it felt for me watching it, what I saw. Um, I did also do the built to birth course. I'll link you to everything I talk about in this video down below if you're interested, so I don't have to say that every time. But it basically explains a lot of things about giving birth and like membrane sweeps and epidurals and the pros and cons and kind of just goes over all of these different things. And essentially it's more from a natural birth standpoint. So after seeing some vlogs and learning about an epidural, like honestly, before I even got pregnant, I didn't even know that an epidural like caused you to be basically not paralyzed, but you can't feel anything from the waist down. So you can't get up and move. You're basically kind of stuck in a hospital bed. And to me, as I thought more about it, I was like, <sighs> the idea of being like laying just flat on a hospital bed, giving birth seems like one of the most unnatural things for me and unnatural ways to give birth. And then I realized like how much I love being in water and I was like anytime I like back hurts or like something hurts or I just want to feel refreshed I take a shower or a bath mostly a shower I don't do baths a whole lot but then that got me thinking maybe I want a water birth so I started kind of exploring that option and realized that you really can't give 
do give birth in water at a hospital. Um, and a lot of birth centers don't allow you to either. So you either are choosing to be at home to do so, or you're at a birth center that does support this, um, way you want to give birth. So I also watched, um, my ex-husband actually recommended that we watch, uh, the, the documentary, the business of being born. So I watched that with Nick and Nick, my boyfriend is a firefighter, a paramedic. And from, a medical standpoint, he said, well, there's a reason they do that. There's a reason they do this. So he said, this is an extremely biased documentary. However, they do have some good points. So, um, for me, after all of my research and stuff, and I'm honestly still doing research, but I have decided what I'm doing, but I just want to know everything anyway. So I'm still doing research and stuff, but I just didn't like the idea of an epidural. Um, there is supposedly fentanyl in epidurals. I don't know if that reaches your baby entirely or maybe not at all. Maybe it's such a small amount. I'm still doing research on it. So nothing I say in this video, you should take as fact, like this is my own thing and what I'm doing and I'm just sharing it with you. So if you hear something in this video that you're questioning or wondering about, you should most definitely question it for yourself and you should most definitely talk to your doctor, Google it, do whatever you need to do for you to feel comfortable for yourself. It just got so dark. Like the sun is like out and then not today. It's like back and forth. So I don't know. I have always been the type of person that doesn't really like to take medicine if I don't need it. I try to fix things, like I said, with more water, exercise, diet. So the idea of taking an epidural and taking meds through an IV or however, I didn't love that idea. I also didn't love the idea of being in a sterile hospital room because I am someone that is highly uh, like affected by my surroundings. So when the sun isn't out, I feel down and I'm not as happy or chipper. So when the sun is out, my mood is much different. So knowing that and kind of seeing some birth vlogs, I was just like, that looks horrible to like give birth in that type of setting for me. So like with the bright lights and nurses are leaving shift and then coming on and you might have someone different 15 minutes later and you don't really know why. And um, I was asked at the birth center I chose why I decided that the birth center was for me. And obviously there's a lot of reasons for that and I kind of just went over some of them. But another thing for me was that I haven't had, oh say, so I've had two breast augmentations and I haven't had honestly the best experiences during those surgeries um, because I felt like I was being told what to do and not really given options a lot of the times. And I would see people putting things in my IV and I wouldn't really know what was going on. And I don't like that feeling. I'm very type A personality. I want to know what is going on. I want to know what the plan is. I want to know what you're putting in my IV. I want to know what to expect exactly. So the fact that the hospital, like the normal hospital system, for the most part, I'm not saying this is always true, but for me, I've experienced times where I felt uncomfortable because I didn't know what was going on or why something was being done. Here's a perfect example. So the glucose test, you're supposed to do around 28 weeks of pregnancy, I believe. So I went in there to do that and I'm sitting there and it's this like sterile like environment, like the most like unwelcoming environment in the world. So I'm not super comfortable. So this girl puts down this like orange like drink like this in front of me. And she's like, here you go. You're going to take this and then we'll wait an hour and we'll um, do the test or whatever she said. And I was just like, an hour? Like <laughs> just all casual. Like, oh, you're just going to chill in this boring ass, hideous room for an hour. I was like, oh no, no, no. I, I'm so sorry, but I can't do that today. I have an appointment. And then I was like, by the way, like, I don't understand. Like if you're testing glucose, like I obviously I don't know, I'm not a medical professional. I don't know anything about this, but like, why do you drink this like giant sugary thing and then test? Like what's the, what's the point of that if I'm supposed to be fasted when I come in here? And she couldn't answer me. Um, she had no idea really exactly how it worked or why I was taking this drink or really what was in it. And I was just like, I'm not drinking a giant thing of sugar that's like colored. Like, I don't even know what's in that. Like I need to do some research. So, um, I went home and did just that. And I decided to do glu glucose monitoring instead, which Nick is bringing me, um, a little thing to do that with. Uh, and I'm going to do that instead. I just don't want to drink a giant thing of sugar. But my point is, 
she didn't even really know what to tell me about that. And that's kind of crazy to me that that's what you do for a living and you don't, you're not armed with the knowledge to tell somebody exactly what they're doing and how it works. Like that's a problem for me. And I, that's not the first time I've experienced that in a hospital setting or a doctor's office. So for me, I was like, this is one of the most important moments in my life when I bring my child into this world and I'm highly affected by my surroundings. So I really want to be in a comfortable space that is lit how I want. It smells how I want. The temperature is where I want it. And I just have things around me that are comforting and make me feel good and keep me in a good headspace, especially since I want to do this natural if I can. So that's what led me to a birth center. And prior to a birth center, I always knew I wanted a doula. And if you don't know what a doula is, I'm still learning myself, but in short, it is basically um, an advocate for you. They know you, they know your partner, they know your birth plan. And I say birth plan, but really it should be more of a birth outline because things change and you need to be flexible. And even if you're type A like me, you need to know that you need to be flexible. So that's what I'm trying to do. So they basically will advocate for you. And I think for me, I was thinking if I do give birth in a hospital and if that's the route I choose, I know that I want to do love because at the time of being in the hospital, your personality completely changes. I hear when you're about to like birth your baby, you are, could be scared. You could be nervous. You, you sometimes don't get the full picture of what you want and what you need to know. You just get kind you feel like you might be kind of forced into a decision. And some of you might be able to relate to that, whether it's about birth or medicine or test results or what symptoms that you are having, you know, whatever, you just might feel kind of like pushed in a direction. And maybe you can relate to that right now with the COVID um, vaccine. I'm sure your doctor has probably mentioned it to you and pushed it on you. Um, so in those types of situations, it's someone there for you to advocate to basically be your lifeline between you and your doctor so that she can say, you know what, this is not what she wants to do. And then she'll come to you and say, hey, so they wanna do a membrane sweep. Um, here's what it is, here are the pros, here are the cons, and here's how I feel about you needing it right now. So they are a really good like advocate for you and your health and your baby and exactly what you wanna do. They help you stretch, they help you. Um, some are uh, specialized in massage therapy, so they'll help massage you during labor. So they're just really there as an emotional support system. And I've also heard them describe themselves as chameleons, where they will basically sit in the corner of the room and just be there if you need them, if that's what you want. They will take on as little or as much as you would like them to take over. They are not midwives though, they do not deliver babies. So. I knew I wanted a doula. You can have a doula in a lot of different settings. Um, you can have them at home. You can have them in a birth center. You can have them um, in a hospital. There are doula websites that I will link below that I found some people on. I have interviewed three people now and I have found my doula. Um, actually, Brooklyn, the uh, friend of mine that I do the podcast with, this is her doula. And I loved that she had basically used her before and worked with her and felt really comfortable with her and her husband's known this person for a very long time. So I felt really comfortable with her. I talked to her on the phone and you know, if you want a video on some of the things that I asked a doula, then feel free to let me know in the comments below. But you basically want to make sure that your personality vibes with them. Um, there was a couple doulas that I did interview that I thought were great people, like nothing personal, but for me, I just didn't feel like, like I thought about myself in, in labor and in pain. And did I think that person was going to be able to support me in the ways that I needed? And the answer was no. So I kept looking. So basically I have chosen my birth center that I'm going to give birth at. And I will share that after my birth. Um, I don't want to share it before. Uh, but I felt really good about the birth center. I actually wanted to give birth at home in a pool of water. Um, not our pool out there, but like a pool inside the room because at my house, I feel the most comfortable. This is where I feel just good. And as a woman, your body is going to hang on to your baby and it's going to be harder to give birth if you're like, clenched up, nervous, feeling uncomfortable, or you're scared. We're just like animals. Like animals will find a safe place to give birth. Like cats, you know, give birth to their babies and their kittens under houses a lot of times or in just areas that they feel good in. And we're the same way. So 
if your body and mind are not at ease during this process, like it can be, it can cause difficulty birthing. So I wanted to do it at home. Nick was not comfortable with that because he's heard kind of some bad stories from friends that have done it at home where things have kind of gone wrong. Um, thankfully, everyone's been okay every time, but where they just haven't gone right. And he's also delivered about 40 babies himself um, in bad situations, you know? So I said, well, how do you feel about a birth center then? Um, you know, or I even thought about an Airbnb that was near a hospital. But honestly, like with an Airbnb, like what are you gonna do, rent it for like a month and a half surrounding your birth date? Because that's just an estimate. It doesn't always happen on that day. Probably more often than not, it doesn't. And supposedly with first time births, like since this is my first child, I guess t it's very typical to like go over your due date by a week or two. So we, you know, Nick was very skeptical, but I scheduled an appointment. We went to the birth center and I kind of let them know beforehand. I was like, hey, like, I don't just want a tour. Like, I would really like to talk to a midwife there who's knowledgeable that my boyfriend can ask questions. I can ask questions and we can feel really good about the decision we're going to make. So they put us together with the owner, um, one of the owners, and she's also a midwife really liked her. She's Christian. Um, she was very straightforward, but genuine. And Nick was straight up with her and was like, I don't think this is a good idea. Kind of like convince me otherwise. Like, what do you do with X, Y, and Z? And she was just very straightforward and gave us the answers that we needed to hear. And when we left, he was like, I'm on board with this. Like, I'm okay with this. Like, this is, a, I think, a good compromise. So we did compromise and the reason why um, giving birth at our house wasn't necessarily an option is because we're about 40 minutes away from a hospital without traffic. So should something go wrong, that was just too far for him. And honestly, me too, like thinking about it, I was just like, gosh, if something were to happen and that was my fault for choosing to do it at home and there was an issue, like I would never forgive myself. So um, my birth plan is basically to give birth in probably, I don't know if I'm going to want it bright and light in the room or darker. I'm going to guess darker, but I got an oil diffuser. Um, I've got, uh, my doula. I've got the birth center. We're going to start going to weekly classes once we get back from our baby moon. And, uh, they require that. They also require you to have a doula at this birth center. There's a big tub in the room. Um, and on my birth vlog, you guys will see the room and I'll share it with you. But um, there's all sorts of equipment in there to squat. You can be in the tub. You can take a shower. So there's just a lot of things in there that just make it really cozy and homey. And one of the issues I had trying to find a birth center in San Diego that I liked was that a lot of them just looked like they were not super clean. And it looks like, I hate to say this because I freaking love thrift shops and Goodwill and stuff, but it honestly looked like they just went in and grabbed a bunch of linens and random furniture from Goodwill and put it in a room. And if I was going to choose between a hospital or that, I honestly would have chose a hospital and brought a doula because I just knew that I wouldn't feel comfortable in the room. Uh, I just have... A certain standard of like cleanliness, um, aesthetics, all that kind of stuff. So I just knew that I wouldn't be comfortable there. And maybe that makes me really bougie, but oh well, that's just the reality. I just didn't, I knew I wouldn't feel comfortable there. So uh, this birth center was kind of one of the only ones that I found that was like super cute, like beautiful plants. They make you tea, just very like nurturing and homey feeling like I would live there, you know? So that was kind of um, a struggle that I did have here in San Diego. And if you're in San Diego kind of looking for a birth center, you might have experienced the same exact thing. So um, my birth plan essentially is to have a natural birth and to give birth um, as easily as possible and as comfortable as possible. I'd like no interventions of any kind. You know, our bodies are beautiful and what they do is amazing. Like I'm building a human being in my stomach right now. Like that's fucking epic. <laughs> like, I don't know what I've been doing the rest of my life, but like this is the greatest achievement because it's just like crazy what our bodies can do and what they're built to do. And, you know, I truly believe that like our bodies know what to do. Our bodies don't need, you know, Pitocin or sometimes they do. I shouldn't say that. Sometimes they do, but 
if all is like low risk and everything, which you have to be low risk to give birth at this birth center, but, um, your body knows what to do. Like your body was built for this. Your body knows how to grow a baby. Your body knows how to give birth. And if you just let it take over and don't be scared and don't clench up, like I, that is like, that's my plan. You know, obviously I've never given birth before. I'm totally new at this. So I have a lot to learn and a lot to experience, but I would like to keep it as natural as possible. So now currently I'm doing a lot of spinning babies movements. And, um, if you don't know what that is, it's a technique or a website. I, I don't know exactly where they show you different movements to do to get your bite baby in like right position to be able to give birth. Um, and that's another thing that I really love about a doula too, is like they have, they're so experienced with this that they know exactly what signs to look for. They know exactly how to help ease, um, the pain. They know how to comfort you. Um, and they know they know what they're doing. Like they know when like you've been pushing for too long and we need to do something else. Like they just are very knowledgeable. So I feel really good about the team that I've got and you know, yeah, our bodies, I just feel like are totally made to do this. And you know, sometimes there needs to be intervention if something doesn't go right or whatever, but I would like as little interventions as possible. Like I don't want to be told I have to have a C-section because the hospital doesn't want to take on the liability because I've been pushing for X amount of hours, like a doula and the midwife will tell me, okay, Hey, we need to move you to a hospital if they need to, but that's like, you know, to keep me safe, the baby safe. But they will make sure that you are do they're doing everything that they can to help you have a natural birth and enjoy that time. Um, so yeah. And then there's, you know, there's some misconceptions about what they do at hospitals and stuff. Like, you know, I was reading on UC San Diego that they don't bathe the baby anymore right away. And that's something I knew that I didn't want. Um, you know, that vernix or whatever that's all over the baby. It's like that waxy stuff. I don't look at me not knowing like my terminology. Um, supposedly, you know, that's really good for the baby to have on them. So, you know, and I saw another TikTok that was like, oh, like your baby's going to experience like latex gloves touching them for the first time at a birth center. You just reach your ass down there and grab your baby if that's what you want to do. You know, as you do what works for you. But, you know, there's just a lot of different, everyone's so different. You know what I mean? So like whatever makes you comfortable, you should explore that option but don't ever let anyone like try and pressure you into doing something you don't want to do or that you don't feel like you're going to feel comfortable doing. Uh, and that's kind of what I did. I just followed my heart. I was like, I don't want to be in a hospital. Like, that's not what I want. I don't want nurses coming in and out. I don't want an IV hooked up to my arm the whole time. Like, I don't want to be stuck in a bed. I want the option of a water birth. Um, who knows? Maybe I'm going to go into labor and I'm not even going to want to be in the water. I don't know. But I just feel really good about the decision that I, that we've made to choose a birth center and a doula. So that's basically my birth plan. If you guys have any like words of wisdom or advice for me before I embark on the journey that is labor and birthing my child, <laughs> please let me know. I'm sure, uh, we've got a lot of pregnant ladies here that would also love to read your comments. So whether you had a hospital birth or an at home birth or birth center or whatever, please share your pearls of wisdom below. Um, and if you guys think of any other videos that you want to see, I'm going to start pre-filming some stuff because I'm going to want some alone time with me and the baby once she gets here. So I'm going to try and pre-film some stuff, but let me know if you have any ideas or anything you want to see, um, or any questions based on this video and I'll do my best to answer them. But, um, again, I'm leaving some links in the down bar below for you. So check those out and thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.